Leah, I'm putting together my own skincare routine, aren't you proud? But I am missing a toner step, so I need you to hook me up with a good toner. Why do you need a toner in the first place? Don't I need a toner? No? Doesn't my skin need a toner? Clinique told me to have a toner. You lived without using a toner for 30 years. Your skin is doing fine. Why do you need it? It's all a scam. When you work in the beauty industry, you tend to see and learn things that you didn't even want to see. And I'm all about doing skincare intentionally, making sure that you only feed your skin what it needs. And a lot of times your skin sensitivity, your acne, irritation, they are all coming from overfeeding your skin, over applying things that aren't necessarily needed and craved by your skin. Let's learn about what is actually essential to our skin and what are supplementary and not really needed. I would highly encourage you to also check out Dr. Dre's video and also Susan from Mixed Makeup's video on this very topic. I just want to lay it out there that skincare essentials, they're no more than cleanser, moisturizer, and your sunscreen. And if you are someone who just likes to combine the SPF and your moisturizer, that is also fine. You only need two products in your skincare routine that is the bare essentials or the non-negotiables and everything else surrounding that and you see in the market is not necessary. If you think about it, the entire multi-step regime was created by beauty companies. All these conglomerates to sell you on more and more products, making you feel like you need this and that, all these 10 step, 20 step skincare regime. And as long as you are in the beauty industry, you can't really neglect the power of the final distributor, the retailer. So they actually have the most decision-making power in the new product development process. So for example, hypothetically speaking, let's say I have only one hero product, Matahem Hydrating Cleanser. I placed this in a major national retailer and they see this selling really really well then the retailer would come to us asking for can you expand the matcha hemp hydrating line into making a toner essence serum eye cream day cream spf sleeping mask whatever because at the end of the day they want to capitalize on what is selling really well so it is kind of sad to know that our skin as a consumer like someone who will be applying the skincare products is not often prioritized in the new product development decision making process. It's oftentimes the retailers pushing for more product SKUs, the company having its own financial sales target, therefore we need to fill in more new products to have that kind of bump or a big jump in the revenue. So yeah and i'm sorry to tell you this but there's really no difference between toner and an essence and this is something that i got a little bit shook when i first learned about this and i just got really mad because i was told to apply toner essence and then serum ampule whatever there's no fundamental difference as long as every formulation is like water phase so i can basically pour water and some humectants in a bottle and either slap a label calling it a toner or in essence there's no legal regulation separating these type of product categories and no one will ever call you out same goes with eye cream and a moisturizer now I know there might be some people who have really, really strong opinion or a strong objection on what I'm about to say. There's no fundamental difference in an eye cream formulation and a moisturizer formulation. They both have humectants, emollients, occlusives. One tends to be a little bit greasier, waxier, and tends to be a lot more higher priced, and that's called an eye cream. I don't want to take the joy away from you using your own eye cream. I think there are certain eye creams that might be a little bit too greasy too thick to apply like for the rest of your face and in that case i don't really see why not at the end of the day if you do find a moisturizer that is kind of greasy enough to apply around your eye area and you're happy with it that you can call it an eye cream too oftentimes there would be some companies that will get more clinical trials with the specific eye cream that they developed um, if it's safe around the eye areas or if it is a approved by optometrists and there might be some potency in the active ingredient that they use to target the fine wrinkles but that's really about 
it. I don't really believe in applying an eye cream for the sake of applying an eye cream. If you do see wrinkles, I would just use a retinol serum around my eye areas. That is fragrance-free, essential oils-free, potentially any irritants-free. If I find the skin around my eye area particularly drying and really, really sensitive, I would just apply a Vaseline type of material or even a lip sleeping mask over there just to make sure that area is protected and sealed. The same goes with a lot of the creams that are targeting specific areas like neck cream, chest cream, vagina cream. There's gonna be finger cream and a hand cream and a wrist cream like separately in a few decades. I'm not here to tell you stop using whatever you're using. If you feel like those products are working and serving purposes in your own skincare regime, I would highly encourage you to go for it. But don't ever feel the need to jump on something just because you see it. So let's go back to talking about toners and essences and all these watery jazz. You see me applying toners and essences a lot and that is because I feel like it really does provide a lot of hydration that my skin definitely needs. And we see this Korean skincare trend happening to encourage you to apply seven layers of skin toner. When I first came across the concept of skincare diet, which is basically stripping down your skincare routine to the bare basics like cleanser, moisturizer, and SPF, I was mind blown to not see a toner and or an essence or a serum in that skincare diet regime. And I guarantee you that your skin can survive without using a toner and an essence. It's just a nice to have product. So if you're trying to incorporate a toner or an essence into your routine, you might want to ask yourself a question of why you need that in the first place. If your answer is, I want to optimize and balance my skin's pH, I heard the water can be really alkaline. I think in that case, you should be using a cleanser that is slightly more acidic or slightly more skin pH friendly in the first place, and that should do. If your answer is to remove that excess oil, dirt, and grime that your cleanser didn't or potentially kind of missed. I think the biggest misconception is that we always need to make sure that our skin is squeaky clean, dirt free, bacteria free, everything free, which in fact that itself is very disrupting and destroying your skin barrier, which leads to having a much more sensitized skin. If your answer is to prepare your skin to absorb the other skincare products better, I do not disagree with you, but I also do suggest you to apply whatever skincare products that you are applying on a slightly damp face after cleansing your face. It is true that our skin is more receptive when our skin is slightly damp. It's kind of like a wet sponge that eats and drinks up all the skincare products that you are feeding to your skin on a slightly moist and cushiony environment. But also at the same time, you are spending more money when you can get that effect for free. When your answer is, to hydrate my skin. That's when you are speaking my language. I'm a firm believer and a supporter of using toners and essences for that purpose. That's when I can give you so many different tailored recommendations that would be right for your skin. And that's why I love using my toners and essences because I know how truly it hydrates and instantly quenches my skin. And of course, I always follow it up with using a good old fashioned moisturizer to lock everything in some and sometimes using an active ingredient in the toner type makes more sense by naming it as a toner you will automatically add it in the first step of your routine after cleansing when you don't have other skincare ingredients or other layers that interferes with that active ingredient delivery or penetration or absorption so vitamin c or aha vha they can be all beneficial when you want to apply it first thing when your skin is more raw and pure. I would love to see more brands like The Ordinary, Drunk Elephant, The Inculus, Beauty Pie, those brands that don't necessarily follow a regime guide or just like a rigid multi-step skincare routine, but rather encourage people to just cherry pick the right ingredients so that they know that they're targeting a certain skin craving and skin needs. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have other myths or beauty questions. Just comment it down 
down below so I can create another video on it. And thank you guys so much again for allowing me to be in your life and take care. Bye!